Hi everyone, welcome to Design Upgrade and thank you so much for tuning in. Just wanted to inform you that this video lesson is part of a larger online course, which actually itself is one of many other courses that you can find on our main site courses.design-upgrade.com. Hope to see you soon there and now please enjoy the video and also leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Hi, so welcome back. I just realized that, of course, for the bridge, we need the bridge cables here, otherwise this picture would be incomplete. So I just want to show you a very quick way to achieve this goal. So basically hanging the bridge onto our big pipes here, in a nutshell, right? So for that, I'm just going to create a new layer and just call it um, cables. Yeah. Double click and already get some sub layers here. This one I'm going to call curves main curves that is perfect here this is going to be loft surface right i'm going to show to of course you why we are doing this and this is going to be planes i'm just doing this because otherwise it would be not that clean and this way we can really control each geometry individual one more and i'm going to call this the yeah the real cables curve gonna hook this up into here and maybe just one more which would be real cables uh, pipes yeah so, uh, pipes something like this so looks complex it's really not what we need to do is first of all go into our shaded mode and you might maybe have the ISO curves on this looks something like this don't be put off by that and I just want to disable everything, which has nothing to do with my main cables or my line. I'm looking for this curve. And I want to go to pipes and say cell curve. And I'm looking also for this curve here, right? So pressing and holding my control button, I deselect everything that I do not need. I just need these two curves. Those two, I'm going to, when I have them selected, I'm going to go to main curve, right mouse button, say copy objects to layer, all right? That means that we can really put everything off now. This whole layer we could put off. And now we're actually looking at the main curves. Now I want to go to loft surface. And what I want to do is say record history. And I want to do a loft, simple as that. You just select that, go to curves, press enter. You will get now this surface. Now what I want to do is actually kind of use an intersect method to create a bunch of planes that we then intersect with this surface to get the lines that are actually on those on the surface. We could also use the extract sub iso curve, iso curve method, extract iso curve, select this. And I'm looking at these cables, right? You could also do it like this, but this would require us to pick pinpoint the positions each individually and then we can't really change them anymore and I want to show you a more parametric way using only Rhino which is by recording an intersect method. So long story short we go to planes and I really want to now create one plane. So going here and going to my plane method and let's take this guy vertical plane right. You could also just type plane and then hit this vertical and now we want to create a plane that exceeds our overall domain and we want to go upwards. We can also go to front to really, uh, so it has to extend the surface that we want to intersect it with. So this is my plane. So it you know, goes above and we can also take it with my gumball, push it ever so slightly down. I have my grid snap on, just maybe also enable that. And now you're asking yourself, why are we doing such a complex thing to do an intersect? Now, let me first show you what we want to do. I'm going to take this guy, I'm just going to push it there, and I want to use the intersect command for that, right? And for the intersect, the geometry that should be generated, I want to have it here on this level. It's a real cables curve. Yeah? And I just select those two, or this surface and this surface, press enter. And now if I get rid of my plane and my soft surface, I will have this nice um, line that I could now pipe and create my cables, that is, right? So obviously we want to do it a bit more interesting and that's what I want to do here. So we're just gonna press Control Z sometimes, get rid of this cable that we just did, or Control Z, Control Z, until your plane is back here. Now what I want to do is I want to create an array. 
I want to have the distance of my cables defined. I just do it by array linear, right? I want to have the number 20 is okay. And I want to start at my reference point, which is actually the starting point here. You could just type in zero because we can start at origin. And I want to lock my y-axis. Now, either you just press and hold shift button or you enable your ortho. In my case, I want to press ortho just because it's a bit easier. And I need to define the, the, the distance. And I'm just going to type in two, like so. Press enter. And now you can see you have these nice planes, right? And obviously, you don't need to use all of them. You could also delete maybe the first two on each side. Something like that. Doesn't matter. Now I want to show you the real nice thing is if you now use the record history, yeah, you enable that, and now you say intersect. You select your surface that you want to intersect your planes with. Press enter. Something magical should happen. Now that you, first of all, you generate your desired cables there, right? So this is my suspension cables that actually hold up my bridge towards the pipe. Looking something along those lines here, right? And if it's super, you know, something like this, we need to understand if this is something reasonable or you, you know, get decapitated by this. But let's just assume for right now it works. And we could then use this to mirror it. The interesting thing though that I want to really show to you is because of using the record history, we should be able to take a plane if you're not happy and just move it and the line will adjust accordingly. So it's kind of parametric, right? We do not need to do the whole setup again to get something back and I can also get rid of my grid snap and really shape it up now. Let's see, maybe I want this cable a bit more here and you can see the line shifts with the plane because the intersect is actually recorded. And that's a very nice design tool that, you know, especially in the beginning in Rhino, when you do not know that you can do this, it's in, insane how much uh, time you waste of remodeling stuff. But you can get a, you can avoid that by utilizing the record history in a very nice way. And like I just told you, so you actually have this all set. Right? We could now delete this. We could put one more here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what I mean with that is. So I just made a quick jump, but what I wanted to show to you is again, if we bring in the geometry that we need, so let's say our extrusion, our pipes, now the surface that we want to generate the cables with and also the planes, right? We can then again, if you want to do it yourself again, just by going to right and see if it's kind of symmetric. I can see that this guy is too much. Maybe I want to get rid of that. And now I do it the same way again. I make sure that I'm on the right layer, say record history. I want to press intersect this guy, please, with all of my planes, all of them here, enter, and now you can see we have all the lines, right? And you can now shape it up by the planes, the loft, and, or yeah, if you have the planes enabled still, you can just move them, grid snap is off, and then ever so slightly change your design automatically, auto magically, that is actually. So there you go, and now we could, you know, do something where we, have the same routine with record history. Take those guys and say mirror. To have them on the other side. Otherwise, this will be very one dimensional, like so. And voila, now we have kind of a bridge that might work already, right? I would say. So we select all of the objects that are here. And in this layer, we go here and then we say pipe again. Yeah. And this time we want to make sure that our pipe is not that because they are the cables, so it's very small diameter actually. Let's give them about, yeah, 0 0.02, yeah, so 0 0.02, that was two centimeters. And let's have a look, they really look too fat. Control Z, pipe again, 0 0.01. Yeah. You get the hang of it. And then we can get rid of this. And now if we bring back everything together, the supports, and we could also give this kind of a nice material, but let's have a look. First of all, there you go. Now this looks a bit more realistic, yeah? It's not optimized, it's not structurally optimized because we still would need to create those cables here. Otherwise, those will just collapse, right? So this is something that you could try out um, to do yourself, right? And I will be looking forward to see it. But in a nutshell, what we need to do for that is if I go back to my main cables here, 
and like so. I could, for instance, take this guy, mirror it like so, and then do a record history, do something like this, and I say loft. I have those points now, and I would just need to have my planes that I have and just make them ever so slightly move them so they intersect with the geometry like so and well yeah still we should get the cables that we need as you can see the lines there but we could use the same method say record history say intersect and i want to intersect the same this surface with all of those guys enter and you still have those pipes and still we have them selected so i will just go to my layer here and also pipe them quickly pipe yeah that's all good and now using the same planes we should have our cables looking a bit more realistic actually so let me bring back and everything I got my pipes got my extrusion okay this looks something that might be realistic yeah my professor would kill me but still this is going in a good fashion and using very simple methods in Rhino you are able to design up a kind of a bridge idea there yeah so good job that's it for this example now we can continue on to the next example good job